Right, semi-serious question time. This kind of builds on the conversation we were having on the live transfer special earlier in the week about the final episode of Home when that inevitably comes. Do open top minibuses exist? And if they do, how do I hire one? And do I need permission to have someone drive me around the village of Home in one, waving my tiny trophy? Hello and welcome to part 223 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we play one of the five clubs in world football who are bigger than us according to the reputation rankings at the end of last season. Atletico Madrid in the Champions League and then we're at home against Bournemouth in the Premier League. I know I advertised Arsenal and Torino. I don't know how I didn't notice we were playing Atletico Madrid. Obviously that's the game we need to show because it's an actual Champions League group game we're at risk of losing. Um, which it's been a long time since we've had one of those. Um, and this is the team. Oh, in fact, before we do that, forget the team. You haven't seen anything. Um, this is a form that we've been in since you were last with me. Um, it's been going really rather nicely, apart from the one blot on the copybook is because Riyad Saidi is in goal for Brighton and he's an incredible goalkeeper. I always knew he was good when I spent all that money on him way back when. 30 years old now. He's... um. I think he's the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. And, yeah, he uh, he just shut us out completely. But other than that, form has been excellent. Um, this is what the Premier League looks like. We are still on course for the invincible season that I want so badly. Um, Thor is still scoring goals for fun. And Walter Silva is looking like an excellent signing, which is all good stuff. We started with a win in our Champions League group as well, beating Slavia Prague 2-0 at home. As a Pancic playing out on the wing as an inside forward, grabbing two goals in that game. Um, and that leads us to today against Atletico Madrid. And we are trying another left winger. This is kind of life after Mira um, and Diara not really doing the business. In fact, Diara needs to move up onto the bench um, because I think I think the Diara opportunity might be coming to an end. He's 22 years old now. Dropped down to three and a half star current ability from the five he had initially. Two and a half star current ability. Um, I know it's my fault for not playing him, but then I couldn't really play him. We had Mira ahead of him and he's not really the player for the last year and a half that he was there when I really thought, I mean there especially, I thought we had an absolute superstar on our hands. And at that point, Probably should have pulled the trigger and played him. We did sell Sorelio with the plan to do exactly that. And then I kind of ended up playing Mira out there for an entire season. And I think we, I probably missed the boat on Diara. We'll see. He might prove me wrong as the season goes on. But I think I think his opportunity might be, might be coming to a close. Augusto is always going to start ahead of him on that left-hand side. Um, but Augusto's injured today, so Ben Young's going to try out there because Ben Young deserves some game time. And I like having an inside forward out there. I think the, the thing with Diara, and we've talked about it before, he's an out and out left winger. I think for him to start regularly over there, we need an inside forward on the other side. Goff and Flager are both proper wingers and very good at it. it circumstances just weren't right for Diara. I'm sure he'll go on to be a very good player somewhere else, and he might still turn it around here, but. Once again, I'm picking someone else ahead of him because I'm a monster. Um, in other monstrous news, um, I have agreed to sell Mendes. You probably saw it when I took him off the bench a second ago. Can't actually find him now because I've got every player at the club on it. There you go. Mendes is going to be joining Fulham in January for a fee of... It's about £35 million. Pounds. How do I actually see that? £34.5 million, pounds, which, yes, it's less than his current value, but he's on a lot of money. He's our fourth choice attacking midfielder. Now Salas is is emerging as well. Um, he was starting to moan about not getting any game time. He's not played at all this year. We only paid £5 million pounds for him. We got four pretty decent years out of him, plus his couple of development years. It's a shame, but again, it's... This is the downside to the transfer policy we've had for six or seven years now. You do get the stars who come through and become world superstars, like Mira, like Aleph, like um, Augusto. Um, who else is an example? Juranovic. You get those youngsters who become absolute superstars, but then you get others who you think will be and don't quite make it. It's one of the one of the perils of youth development. But to then turn a massive profit on players like that, 
I can live with that. We've made a thirty million pound profit on Mendes. Um, we only spent forty two million on Silver, who's a much better player. Uh, so I think I think we win there again. But this is the team that we're playing against Atletico Madrid. We are away from home. This is our first big Champions League test of the season and our first group stage proper test for many, many years. We're going with Powell in goal, a back four of Silvio, Duranovic, Lee and Meyer, Zipancic and Robert in midfield, Young, Silva and Goff behind Thor up front. We don't have a striker on the bench, I've just noticed, which is probably something I need to remedy. Although I guess, actually... That being said, we've got Young out on the wing. That must be what Past Kev was thinking. Um, so we're, I'm happy to leave it as is. We have played Balde in a League Cup game and he did score and play very well. So he is in the back of my mind. But looking at the bench, to have Balde on it as a striker, the man who misses out is going to be Diara. I can't push Diara behind another player in the pecking order. We've, I've got to give him a fair crack of the whip. He has or had the potential to be an absolute superstar. And as much as the likes of Mendes, you could say, well, I gave them a good opportunity and they didn't quite make it. That's fair enough with Mendes. Diara is kind of the opposite. Whenever he got a chance, he looked really good, but I didn't give him enough chances. So, yeah, I've got to, got to try and force myself this season to give Diara some game time when the opportunity presents itself. And I know you're all saying, Kev, the opportunity's right there. You're playing young on the left wing. I know, but it's Atletico Madrid. And I'm afraid to play a completely untried player. Ben Young's a World Cup winner. You know, it's, oh, I actually probably wasn't in the squad when we won the World Cup, but he's an England regular now. Diara's at this level completely untested. So it doesn't feel like the game to test him. I'm too I'm too conservative a manager, clearly, but we'll uh, we'll give him game time. We'll give him game time this year, and if he doesn't, I think if with Diara, if he doesn't force his way into the team this year, it might be time to move him on and look for another youngster to come in, or just go and spend. The, I mean, we could move him on probably for. 30, 40, 50 million, as we've shown with the likes of Mendes and Mercier and players like that previously. We could go and spend that money on a really good left winger to get us through the last year or two of the save. So we probably don't need to replace him with another youngster. We could just say, okay, that experiment didn't work. Let's basically go and swap him for a world class player, like we've done with the Mendes Silva situation. Um, right, we have been the better team here. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's win a football match. A draw away from home against Atletico Madrid would be excellent. It is sad that we've only taken 1,360 fans there. That is twice as many people as live in the village of home. And it's probably more to do with a ticket allocation issue rather than us not having enough fans. Because we did take thirty or what was it, 35,000 people to Wembley for the charity shield. So we have got fans who will travel. But... I can see why a new stadium still isn't a huge priority for the board, because from their point of view, even on our biggest games ever, we take about 30,000 people, and Stadium MK fits about 30,000 people in. So, although it's not our ground, and that is causing us issues with money and whatnot, even if we've got a new ground, we wouldn't need to be any bigger than the one we've got, because we we're not desperate, you know, we barely fill that. Right, a couple of substitutions on the 70-minute mark. Diara comes on for Thor. Young goes up front, Diara out onto that left wing. So we are giving him the opportunity there. And Bogarski, with his uh, new no longer wanting to leave the club situation, getting more opportunities. In fact, we probably need to offer him a new contract. This is a weird thing to do as we're bringing him off the bench in a Champions League match. But, you know, he's no longer wants to leave. Let's say, right, you're coming on to play against Atletico on the condition you sign a new contract. There we go. Contract agreed as he comes off the bench. <laughs> and hopefully, Bogarski, who looked like he was going to be one of the youngsters that didn't quite make it, hopefully, now he's got his head sorted out, he might just turn around and become the player I thought he was going to be 18 months ago, before he got all silly and... OK, he got silly because I signed Robert, but he is starting to get more game time again this year. The only issue with that is it means he is directly in the way of Ribeiro and Diaby, who are the next ones coming through. But we have too many wonder kids. I think that's the problem we've got here. And, you know, only some of them are going to make it. I can't pick which ones they are. I'm only the manager. I don't get to pick who's who plays and who doesn't. Right. 
Last substitution, Drame on for Silva. And, I mean, this is a good result. Let's have 10 minutes of passion. But they're disenchanted as well and we're getting passionate. But nil-nil away against Atletico would be good. If we could grab a winner here, it would be great. And here is Diara to Drame. And Drame beats his man, finds Goff. It's back with Drame again. Zapancic from range, looking for another worldie, like his Champions League final goal. Um, but he didn't quite get enough dip on that one. It seemed to float more rather than be hit with the pace that caused his Champions League final one to dip. And that is a lovely challenge from Lee. He is one of the best players in the history of home, certainly the best defender we've ever had. And he's our captain these days. I mean, he's still not officially club captain, um, but he is vice captain. And with Candomil injured and not playing when he's fit, Lee captains us every game now. And couldn't happen to a nicer chap. He is a superstar. Plus... Sells a lot of merch, so makes us a lot of money as well, which is important for a club in the situation that we're in. But we've gone to Atletico Madrid. We've not lost. Can't argue with that at all. They are, reputation-wise, one of the few clubs left in the world bigger than us, and they haven't been able to score against us at their place. So that, to me, looks like a good result. And now we will go to Bournemouth and see how we perform with the world-famous, trademarked Champions League hangover. So, as usual in the post-Champions League games, um, big, big changes. We've got Radovic coming in in goal. Um, Duranovic and Lee both keep their places because I've pretty much given up on Hervé. Not even on the bench. Silvio and Joksimovic as our fullbacks. Cristiano and Bogarski in midfield. Diara, M Mendes and Flager behind Young up front. Drame would have been there. I'm almost tempted to put Salas in, actually. Drame is injured, though, which is why he's not in. But I think we probably go with Salas, don't we? Because Mendes is on his way out of the club. So we might as well play the player that we're going to be keeping. Let's get Salas making his full Premier League debut. And he has come on as a substitute once or twice before. Uh, but let's see what he's like playing from the start. He might be wonderful. Bournemouth playing with basically a back eight there, which is really ambitious. And um, they have got former home player Gustavo Torrezo, who was a winger when he played for us and seems to have become a central midfield. I think he did play one game in central midfield for us, uh, but clearly they don't play with wingers. So rather than converting to a fullback, like I do with wingers, he's gone to play in central midfield, which he looks, I mean, it did look like he's the most attacking of their central midfielders, although I think he was a number three. So now he's not immediately. He was on that side, looking as looking as the one who was slightly further forward, but he switched over almost straight away. Right, Diara, this is his chance. We talked about him earlier in the episode. He has a nice little run and then wastes it completely. That's what I mean. He's not, he's not quite there, is he? He was two years ago. He scores that, and it might just be that he's not in form because he's not been playing games. But the fact that his star ratings are dropping. And I know I put too much importance on the star ratings. And you'll all tell me about it, like you always do. But that was wasteful. Joksimovic now to Salis. Salis back to Joksimovic. Joksimovic with the cross looking for Diara. And he misses again. Mm. Is Diara the new scapegoat? Feels a little bit harsh. Especially when we've got someone like Joksimovic in the team. Who's basically in the same situation. For two years I've been saying to Joksimovic. Or saying about Joksimovic. He's not real. I can't say it to him. But I've been talking about him, saying that it's the time for him to be our first choice right back. And then Mayer just continues to get better and better, even though he's old. Right, we've been the better team. Are we really going to have an entire episode where we don't score a goal? Home historians, when was the last time that happened? A completely goalless episode. Diara with the free kick looking for Lee who can't quite get there there's Salis picking up the scraps and Silvio plays it out to Diara um, who has been the only player to really create anything as much as I've been picking on him and um, he's involved he's been involved in every highlight which you can't say about any other attacking player we've got Joksimovic now cross towards the young Diara's there and Diara scores hooray oh, it's an own goal oh he could that could have been the redemption story if he'd have scored there Bogarski playing it out to Joksimovic. Let's have a look from this angle. It's a comedy of errors. Flager didn't even... I'd forgotten he was on the pitch. Flager has not been involved at all. Um, and it is a clear own goal. But Diara was there pressing. He was putting the pressure on. He made the own goal happen. Salas is apprehensive. He's not having a lot of fun out there. We have got Silver on the bench who can come on for him um, if need be. It looks like he's probably not 
fit enough to play a full match yet either. Um, so I think we will make that change with Salis coming off and Silva coming on. Not Diara, Salis for Silva. Although I say not Diara, but he is one of the lowest rated players on the pitch. Bogarski can come off for Robert. We'll leave it there for now. We'll give Diara another 10 minutes. But I'm not against trying Zapancic out on that left wing again because we have an abundance of talent in central midfield. And I know Zapancic is our best one, but he had such a good game playing on the left wing earlier in the season. He was outstanding. So maybe Zapancic becomes our winger and we start playing some of these central midfielders. We've got Diara nogs it, no, nogs it down. That's what one does at Christmas on the eggnog. Um, Cross comes in for Bournemouth and Radovic makes the save. Another another youngster who the time is now. He's got to start pushing Powell out of the team. Powell, I think he's 34 years old now. Um, right. What should I do for my final change? Diara. Diara and, and Young are the two lowest rated. But Diara is the one who's not fit or less fit. Tireder than Young is. And Young, I'm willing to give more time to because... I know the circumstances about... I mean, both Young and Diara have kind of been victims of the same thing. Mira. But Young hasn't had very many opportunities at all to play up front, so I'm willing to give him a few more of those. Whereas Diara, at least every game he's played, has been in his own position. And, yeah. I don't know. I'm not feeling very excited about him off the back of this episode. Feel free to tell me that I'm wrong. I know you don't need my permission. That's the comment section every day. But still, I've, I think Diara is going to be one of the ones who slips through the net. This is the Diara isn't very good episode, which, as those of you who've been around for a while know, means tomorrow will open with me telling you how great Diara is, how he's got eight goals in his last six games, how he's the first name on the team sheet, and he's my favourite player in the history of the club because that's usually how these things work. So, fingers crossed, we get that happen again. But tomorrow's episode will be... I imagine we should probably do the other Atletico game because they are that big, fancy team that are better than us. And it could also be the Champions League qualification decider, although I'd like to think we have it wrapped up before then. But it'll be one of these games around here. We'll figure we'll figure it out before tomorrow, probably. Uh, but if you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.